No blood, no fire. You know how it's going down. What up, though? What up, though? What up, though? Welcome back to No Blood, No Foul. Got the gang with me as always. What's up, fellas? How y'all feeling today? Good. What's what goody, man? <laughs> what up, I look, man. Before y'all introduce yourselves, we got a special guest in the building, as you can see. What up, fam? We got Trey McKinney. Yes, Give it sir. up for Trigger Trey McKinney. <laughs> Unguardable, man. All right, man. Hey, we happy to have you here. But, fellas, introduce yourselves right quick. It's Fago. We in here. What up, though? It's your boy, Jay Blood. We in the building. And I'm Uncle Smooth here, as always, man. And uh, I'm just happy to have you here, bro. We were just, first off, before we get started, 2022, 2023, AP Player of the Year. Can we see the trophy, bro? You see when we know. got it propped up, you know what I mean? <laughs> Here, man, we got to clap that up too, man. So, I got a bunch of questions, man, but just let's just start it from the jump, man. Where are you from? You know, I know you're not from Orchard Lake, West Bloomfield. Where are you from, bro? I'm from Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan. Okay, so another Flintstone out of here, man. It's like, man, they got so many barbers, man. What's in the wall? Well, hold on. I can't say that. <laughs> I can't say that. Like, what is it? What is it, dog? Be few, hey, no, no disrespect, man, dog. What is it about Flint, bro? And like, <laughs> hey, that was hey, that was unintentional, but for real, it's like Flint got a pedigree, bro. So, what is it about Flint that kind of made you who you are in your, in your game, bro? Well, I just feel like just growing up, just playing against those top players, especially since Flint has a lot of good hoopers. Yeah. Just playing, growing up, playing against the older guys okay. helped me a lot. And just growing up, you know, it's a lot of uh, basketball history in Flint, man. A lot of good, great players that came out of there. So when you was when you were growing up, like was there anybody that you kind of like looked up to or like patterned your game after? After? Well, Miles Bridges is close to my family, so I feel like when I was growing up, I really looked up to him. He gave me guidance on what I had to do growing up just to be one of those top players. That's what's up. Who was giving you buckets? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It may not be like somebody like Miles, somebody in your age range, maybe a couple years older when you were a young boy. I know somebody got you buckets before. Damn, it, it take that it take that much time. <laughs> <Right. laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> hey. Anybody or not really? Probably just like because I was younger when I was playing on my AAU team, FA Heat, when we used to play like in elementary school. So I feel like yeah. those guys they hold me get better. He's I'm, playing up. He ain't been giving him buckets since okay. elementary. That's the last yeah. time they put buckets on your head, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's what's up, man. Because um, this year, of course, at Orchard Lake, you had a you know a story season. Um, you guys got real far in the playoff run, kind of fell short, but it was kind of unprecedented. Like we were surprised at how you was knocking out all these teams with all these seniors. You know what I'm saying? You were sending a lot of people to college a little early. You know what I'm saying? And expected, bro. So. Um, Talk to me about that as far as, like, just the, the journey you was on this season and uh, your progression from your freshman year to your sophomore year. Well, I feel like just what we were going through in the regular season, like, helped us prepare yeah. for the, the, like, the – Right, a lot playoffs. of ups and downs, yeah. bro. Yeah, bro. I feel like just sticking through it with our team and just – I feel like that helped our chemistry yeah. and just us just being tight, knowing, like, we're going to be back here next year and just we got we have nothing to lose because nobody expects us to do, to do that. Right. I understand. You said nobody expects y'all to do nothing? I don't feel like nobody. I thought no. everybody thought we were going to lose to Brother Rice. He must oh, not yeah. watch our show, Joe. Yeah. I don't know if he watches. <laughs> yeah. Because we, we made predictions. And uh, I think we all went St. Mary's, right? Yeah, for sure. I don't for know sure. if I did, but I'm, you know, we're going to let him slide. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just playing. I kind of like watch your progression throughout the season as far as like, you know, the mindset that you took. You know what I'm saying? And I want you to kind of like, let us in on that, you know what I'm saying? As a sophomore, uh, the different defenses you faced, you know, uh, the pressure, you know, as far as people expecting you to win certain games and perform, perform you know, at a high level at certain games. Uh, like, what went into that? Well, I feel like just me and my coach is breaking down film, especially, like, because I feel like he told me, like, it's something he hasn't seen before, the way I was, like, being guarded and stuff. So, mm -hmm. I feel like – just being like more mature and just breaking down the game, that just really helped me a lot. Where did you get like that maturity as far as to just know it's, it's a long game, know how to get your teammates involved and get your, your game off? It, I feel like it comes with like a bunch of people just looking at me. I feel like I can't really like feed into what other people are doing to me, especially like early in the game. Uh -huh. Just gotta stay locked in. I feel that, but I feel like you're being too humble. 
<laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with I know you got a good father. You know what I'm saying? You humble. <laughs> but, like, you was cooking up, bro. And, um, you know, Jay is a trainer. That's my trainer. You know what I'm saying? I like <laughs> to say that. But, like, so I'm noticing, like, the moves. Like, the moves are pro-esque, bro. And um, you crispy in and out. You, like, picking your spots. And I'm seeing the maturity from that point of view. You feel mm -hmm. me? So it's like you know how to read the game. And that's kind of unseen and unheard of as a, as a sophomore. Mm. And um, your game is way different. You know, as your freshman season, because, I, cause, cause, you know, you had Kareem, of course, but you was kind of like the main one, you know, running the show. So, like, I know you talked about Culver, watching film, um, and, you know, so I feel like that's all important. But, like, we want to get to, like, the inside, like, like what drives you type of vibe because we're trying to inspire them eighth graders and them seventh graders is looking up to you, you know what I mean? We want them to be on the same type of time you on. So, mm -hmm. like, what is it that drives you to be, the, you, know, the, you know, the best? Well, I just feel like I love basketball, and I just, I just feel like I just have fun doing it every day, embracing it and just making it. I feel like I got to give, like, some young people to look up on, especially yeah. since, like, with my family, they, like, sacrifice a lot for me, especially right. doing what I'm doing right now. Exactly. So what about the regiment, though? Like, is it like 6 a.m. training drills? What are we doing? Like, talk yeah, to me. Yeah, I feel like. What can you divulge? 6 a.m. <laughs> it's 6 a.m. sometimes, but I mostly get into it after school. Okay. Then I lift again. It looked like you take a lot of pride in your defense, man. It was a couple of games I seen, like, you take on the challenge of guarding the best player. Is that something that you, like, really, you know what I'm saying, pride yourself on is, like, being a great defender? Yeah, because I feel like most good players – Nowadays, I don't feel like they really guard the other best player on the court. So I yeah. feel like people will, like, look at me and, like, reward that. No, Where did sure. you get that mentality from? Because a lot of people just don't, like, see that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not – like you said, that's not what's going on in today's game as far as the best players guarding the best players. Well, I feel like I, I watch – I know this, like, because a lot of people watch Kobe, but I feel like I actually, like, study him and I watch mm -hmm. him. So I feel like – I just take on, like, he used to guard the best player, so I do it. Yeah, Kobe, Kobe Mamba mentality. Yeah, this is know, where it's coming from. <laughs> I'm like, like, next year, everybody's, like, expecting y'all yeah. to win it all. But it's like, you know what I mean? How Like, how do you deal with that pressure? Just work through it? Yeah, well, I feel like we got the blueprint now since we made it to Breslin. And we came up short, but I feel like it's just motivation because we don't want to – we don't really want to lose like that again. Yeah. I wanted to ask, man, like, throughout the year, there's always, like, rumors of you y'all getting y'all uh, two of you guys' main players back. Uh, Isaiah Hines and uh, – Speedy, right? Jaden. Jaden Savore. So, was that, like, a distraction for you? Because I know it was kind of like, man, we – oh, they're coming back to this game. Oh, they got clear to play. Was it a distraction or was it something where you were just like, if they're here, they're here. But if not, I still got to do what I got to do. Like, what yeah, was your approach? I feel like they are going to be, like, a lot of help this season. But I feel like it was actually – it was kind of frustrating, especially because they were doing it, like, right before the game. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I feel like we just stick together. They they count. They were, like – they knew we had their back. So, I feel like we just did it for them. How do you build mm -hmm. this off season? And um, with EYBL coming up and all that, you know, the circuit you're in, like, what's the difference between high school ball and then the AAU vibes? Like, what's the biggest difference you would say? Like, in high school, they really, like, study you. Like, they know what you're yeah. going to do. Yeah. In AAU, they don't really, like, know what you're going to do. Okay. So, I feel like Surprise it's definitely – I feel like it's definitely a challenge to get off in high school more than okay. AAU. Yeah. That's how yeah. – that's and how I always – down, too, probably. Yeah, that's how I always felt. It was like – in high school, it was like you were put in a box. You had to deal with, like, your coaches mm -hmm. and certain things that they was telling you to do every day. Yeah. And then you get to an AU team, it, it just felt like Free freedom. Flowing, right? And you okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm about to – and you playing against the best. You know what I'm saying? It's the first time you're seeing this guy, this guy. You know what I'm saying? It just felt like freedom. Like, you know, I'm about to – I'm about to paint. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm any <laughs> cast above you rank, you want to see what's up. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. And that's okay. it. It's exciting. You know, and it's just is 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 great because you're playing against the best. Yeah. You know, around the world. You know, you seeing where you rank mm -hmm. up against them. You know what I'm saying? Right. You learning stuff from, you know, different coasts and things like that. Then you bringing it back home. You okay. know what I'm saying? I think you're gonna do some good work this off season. You got anything you're kind of working on with your game? To improve or just like you know, what's your vibes with that? I'm feel like I'm I've been working on trying to move, not move, but like 
show people that I can play the point guard position. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And facilitate and make my teammates better. Yeah. And that's and uh that's the difference I see in you with the other I know they ranking you in the two guard position. You know what I'm saying? I think the game of basketball is changing where the best players, no matter what position they categorize you in, they play they play point two. You know what I'm saying? That's where you got the point forwards, the the combos, the point three threes or point fours like Jokic now. You know what I'm saying? He's really like a point four. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And uh, I think that's where the game and that's what I was most impressed in, like watching you this season as far as like what I see different from you than the other top guards in your class, like nationally, is you can make decisions. You know what I'm saying? I see a lot of cook cookie cutter twos where right. they can shoot, they can dunk, they slash can or you slash. But as far mm-hmm. as really thinking out the game and making the right passes and making people better, I don't see nobody like that. You know what I'm saying? And that's and I know you're only gonna get better at that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? To be at that at this age is it's crazy, and I tell, like, Blood and my brothers all the time, like, certain way that you're playing, I didn't play like that until a year out of college. Yeah, facts. You know what yeah, I'm facts. saying? Like, learning the European game mm. and all that, man. So, you know, hats off to you, man. Just keep it up, for real, for real. I know you always played up, even like you said in elementary. What made you – is it a reason behind playing with the 17U this year as opposed to 16U? I feel like 16U, it wasn't, like – as challenging as 17U is going to be this year because 17U is, like, the big stage. And the crown, everybody, yeah. yeah. Everybody comes to our 17U, so I feel like that's going to be a big challenge for me. So you want the challenge? Yeah. Okay. That's that Kobe mentality, man. So is yeah. Kobe your all-time favorite player? Yeah, either him or LeBron. Okay. <laughs> so what are, what are some of your favorite players playing right now, college or NBA? You can give me, give me one from college, give me one from NBA. I like Keontae George, and I like Devin Booker. Okay. D book. Keontae George. D book. Like what is what is D book gonna do? Hey, D book tonight. <laughs> what is D book gonna I'm do tonight? You, bro. <laughs> he gonna lock up like he did last game. You know what I'm saying? Except this time. Hey, my brother. Like my brother. I don't know what it is, but he 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 he, he out for D book head. <laughs> like, and I was trying to tell him. Like, like yeah. I'm talking to him yesterday. He's talking about uh, D book is the fifth best scorer on the court right now. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> like, as far as skill-wise with D-Book, yeah. like, he got every shot. You know what I'm saying? He got a lot of skills. I think what it is, sometimes he just want to see him be tougher, but. But he, he along the lines of that Kobe school a little bit. I ain't saying he's Kobe, but he was one of Kobe's guys, right? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So certain things he do, I'm like, okay, I see that Kobe. Right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no secret. We You know, we think you're one of the best, you know, out here. But we feel like you the best two guard in the country. You, and I feel comfortable saying that. You know what I'm saying? You seem comfortable. You seem like, yeah, I am. So, like, what like what about that? your skill set makes you, you know, better than other players that are, you know, nice or maybe tall or may have more fanfare? You know, like, what about you makes you better than them? Yeah, well, I feel like I just – I put in the work. I feel like I study the game. I do all the little things. I feel like uh, most – Players that they put up in front of me, I feel like they don't do the little things, but I mm-hmm. feel like that's going to show this summer. Yeah. Time out. I want to talk about the over the right shoulder, over the left shoulder, fadeaway. <laughs> How many straight are you shooting? Like, talk to me. Like, footwork. I'm saying side steps. I'm saying misdirections. Like, so your skill work is there. But, like, what goes into that? Because, like, my son want to know, bro. You know what I'm saying? He in seventh grade. He watching. He want to know the game. Like, what I, What does he need to work on? So, it's like, I get what you're saying, but, like, talk about how hard that work is. You know what I'm saying? It's like you kind of downplaying it. Like, yeah, it's easy, but it ain't. <laughs> I know it's not. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm just now, like, starting to master, like, both shoulders, like, on the fadeaway, and that's I, hard. Cause yeah, guys, because one over yeah. that one is easy. You know, your like, you know, your left shoulder, but that up the right shoulder, bro. I'm yeah, like, most guys only have one shoulder. Exactly. So I feel like just having multiple, like uh, both shoulders. I feel like that helps you because most guys, bro. most guys only study one shoulder. Yep. So I feel like, and like, I work on like my pivots and stuff. Most guys only have one pivot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you work on your other pivot. That's like another advantage. So I feel like just doing that type of stuff 
that nobody else is doing. It just help, mm. does nothing but help you. I seen some Kobe training videos on YouTube. Kobe crazy with it. I gotta tell Footwork you about crazy. Uh, like since Kobe's one of your favorite player, uh, I was in the gym one time when I was when I was with the Lakers and I show up early. So uh, I finished my workout. Kobe come on the court, bro. <laughs> I think I told you this before. Kobe come on the court and uh, he he take he take the trainer that was you know working out with me. So he started just shooting fadeaways, right? <laughs> He started shooting phaseways, and he know I'm looking like Kobe kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because he also trying to put fear in me, too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he also yeah. trying to put fear in me. So then he started telling the trainer to hit his arm. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. he fading away and, the, and hitting his elbow. You know what I'm saying? And Every he, time. He's still hitting him. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then he started just saying, harder, harder. So they slapping the shit out of his elbow while he's shooting. And he's still making them like like on the release or like he got like hang time getting hit and then it's straight it's straight like this on the release like, on the release That's you know what I'm saying like yeah. then he just walk out and just look at me <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm like oh, yo this, like you you actually practicing you know what I'm saying because like before a game you know how you be just wanting to get shots in and yeah. make them like you practicing somebody hit you on the elbow to make them you getting bruised up before the game what you doing. Right, like that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's crazy. That's, man. Man. that's, that's mama mentality, right there. But man. what you doing is pretty. In high school, I wasn't I wasn't working out the day before the game. Feet work. You know what I'm saying? Feet work. <laughs> I'm telling you, dog. I'm peeping it. And um, I know you've been in the game. You know, like you said, since elementary playing like AU. Like, at what age did you kind of see like, okay, I'm a little I'm a little special with it. Like, at what age did you know? Probably, like, around when I started playing travel ball, like, high-level travel in middle school. Probably, like, around, like, sixth grade when I was playing with LeBron's son. So, I, I was playing against the best players. So oh, I, you played with LeBron's son yeah, for a minute? Son. Okay. Bryce, Bryce, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about um, offers that have been rolling in. You know what I'm saying? As far as, um, you know, different – Different schools that's looking at you. I'm not sure who you even want to say or if you can say, but uh, can you talk about any, like, you know, offers that, that came your way so far? Well, Michigan, Michigan State, Indiana, Miami, Stanford. Those are the schools that are mostly looking at me okay. right now. How do you deal with, like, all the attention, all the people that want to talk to, talk to you? You know what I'm saying? Because I know back in my day, like, all they could do was call, and I was tired of them off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now you yeah. got like Instagram, you got all these different ways people trying to contact you. Like, how can you like kind of zone out and still remain in the moment and enjoy being a kid and you know what I'm saying? And focus on basketball. Well, I feel like I've always knew what the, like what was gonna come with it if like I became good. So mm -hmm. I feel like just staying level headed, just staying staying me, staying in the gym, just doing the stuff I have to do. I feel like it's not really gonna change me. I went to JUCO and Flint, man, and uh, one thing I say about Flint, I like, I know for sure is like a basketball town, man. Like, you gonna hoop, you gonna get some good run in, good competition, and uh, you know, I talked to your father, and he was telling me that um, William Hatcher and Bean and uh, Greg, Greg uh, Burks, that these are two people that you know you kind of talk to, and kind of like look to for guidance and whatnot. And these are two peers of mine who I I really respect in the basketball game. Uh, can you talk about those guys, like, how they helping you out on your journey, man? Well, they just – I feel like they've been at that level. They've been at the next level. They've been at the pro level, so I feel like they know what's going on and they know what I got to do to get there and keep working. So I feel like they help me a lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Talk about what those sessions look like. Because I know, like, like training with Jay ain't easy, bro. Like, I could say, yeah, <laughs> I train with him at 6 in the morning. Bro, be putting me through it, bro. So, like <laughs> – like talk to me about like, like what you're doing in training. Be before, you know what before, whatever you can before say. Before he go, yeah, I have to talk about uh, just to because I want him to kind of expound. I remember when I was in high school, my coach took me down to Flint, and it was uh, Mateen Cleves. Shout out to Mateen Cleves, and I think Corey Sante is Corey Sante. Sante. Corey shout out Corey Sante. Bro, that was some of the most competitive basketball I ever seen. Yeah. From two Flint guards, you know what I'm nah, saying? Like sure, they was man. pressuring each other, full court talking. You you gonna, hey, you know what you I'm saying? In, like it was some of the <laughs> most craziest. Shit. 
ever. You know what I'm saying? So, like, just talk about, like, you coming up in that. Yo, I feel like always going back there in the summer and playing and competing against those pro-level guys. I feel mm -hmm. like you can never get anything better than that. So, just being around those guys and just soaking up knowledge from them, I just feel like it helps you. I feel like, um, and like I was saying, like, with, you know, Reem there last year, he was primary, you know, carrying a, carrying a heavy load as far as ball handling, but – it seemed like you got better with that. You know what I mean? As far as different moves you was doing, little crosses, and just being comfortable with the ball, pushing it under pressure. Is this something you did specifically to, like, up your ball handling skills, you know, last offseason? I feel like it was already there, but, like, I feel like I didn't really showcase it because I had a dominant point guard. So yeah. I feel like I didn't really have to showcase it. But I feel like I definitely got better with my ball handling okay. since I knew I had to, like, be on the ball, like, 75% of the time. Right. Okay. Is this something you was doing specifically or no, nah, not really? <laughs> you trying <laughs> he's a he's a he's a coach now, so he's probably trying to put his kids through drills. I'm getting the he's trying to figure man. something listen, out, man. It's my first season <laughs> head coach. What y'all doing <laughs> over there, man? We're sec listen, we're in second place. Listen. What is the form you coming in the number one spot? This listen, whole interview, man, I'm sorry. He's like, yeah, yeah, but what are you doing? It's going smooth right now, man. You ain't know that. <laughs> <laughs> just, because listen. I see because like, no, for real, like I appreciate the skill set. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like when I'm watching you or other players, I'm looking at like, I'm looking at Sonny. I'm seeing his skill set. And when I'm impressed by him, it's like that, like will to win. Even with A Cuff, that like mm. he a gamer. You, you're a gamer. Like mm. when, it, when it's lights on, you gonna show up. And it's players that don't show up, and you've seen them. You played against them, so it's like I'm impressed with that. But I, you know, I feel like that type of consistency and like confidence comes with hard work. No, you know what for I mean? sure. For sure. So that's why I'm asking these questions like that, bro. <laughs> Feel me? You're trying to get your regiment, man. Yeah, I'm trying to get that. <laughs> I'm trying to get that regiment, man. Kobe gave us the game. You got to give us the game, too, fam. <laughs> I like y'all assistant, too. That's my guy, man. So, like, you know, Webster. So it's like, what Legend. about the coaching staff? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? What about the staff that kind of, like, helps prepare your game as well? Yeah, well, I feel like – I just feel like they made the right adjustments at the yeah. right times. Most coaches are, like, stubborn to, like, stand to their own ways. He made the right adjustments when we had to, and mm -hmm. it helped us. I feel that. And is he getting your input, like, as far as what you're saying out there? It's like, it's like a collaborative effort? Yeah I, don't f yeah, I don't feel like he ever, like, leaves me out of what we do. He lets me put my input in, and he actually considers what I'm doing. Right. Okay. That's big, too. I feel like that's big with, like, any team. Oh, oh, but so, Trey, off the Celtics, who, who – which player you, you – uh, <laughs> Like, who would be your go-to guy, Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown? Which one are you more of a fan of, if you feel comfortable asking? Jason Tatum. More of a Tatum guy? Yeah, I feel like he shows up way more than Jalen Brown. Whew. I wasn't going to say that last statement, but I'm Tatum, too. Them two Jalen Brown, man. No, I'm, yeah, I'm a Jalen Brown. Tough. Nah, they're both tough. I love Jalen Brown, too. Y I'll say this. I am Jalen Brown, but I do think they're, like, even. I think they, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's Tatum's team. Nah. I think Jason Tatum has more like like skill level, and then I think yeah. Brown has like the tougher. You know what I'm saying? Like the heart and soul of the squad. Yeah, like as far as he'll go in there, like especially last playoffs. Yeah, he start going in there trying to get just like ref. You better call something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he didn't want to so, get his nose broke, cut his hand up, still playing. Harder the heart and soul of the squad. Mm. But Jason Tatum, it don't work without him. But what like what do you see when you or when you look at players' skill? Because I know like I'm older now, and I'll be seeing everybody look skillful. Yeah. Like so, how do you separate like who's better when you looking at in, like certain stuff? What they like what he was talking about like the off shoulder. Yeah. Do they have off shoulder like the pivots and stuff. I feel like because they're the game is like it's highly skilled now. Yeah, it's, it's super. Of, yeah, it's a lot of skilled players. So. Cause you can you can watch a highlight film and be fooled like a mug, yeah. man. What? You know what I'm saying? You'll watch yeah. highlight and be like, oh, okay, and that, you know. But like you go to the game and you see something totally different. And that's what was different about you is like the key moments <clears throat> that you scored, or you know what I'm saying. Just throughout the the game, you know how consecutively you made the right play and things like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was just more asking like like how do the youngins see it? Trey, can you talk about the, like the repetition and just like the, the process of 
being able to consistently make the shots that you're hitting. You know what I mean? Because these are tough shots, and, but you're consistently doing it, you know what I mean, which is very impressive as a sophomore. Can you just talk about, like, the the repetition behind it, you know, uh, how much work that you're putting in in order to perfect these certain spots that you love to get to? Yeah, I feel like that's actually like that. I feel like that's actually the difference between, like, just a skilled player and, like, a like an actual, like, pro skilled player. Like, just being consistent, like, knowing, like, I can get to my spot, I make this. Like, that's consistent. Mm -hmm. I, I feel mm -hmm. like that's, like, separation. And how did you just add that three ball? Like, I didn't see you as a freshman, but I did watch, like, the first half of the season and you took more mid-ranges. And then towards the tournament, you was looking for the tray. Yeah, well, I feel like most people sleep on my three ball. Mm -hmm. I actually, like, have, a, like, a lot of range, and I've been working on that. So mm -hmm. I feel like my three ball has always been there. I just feel like people – yeah, I feel like you didn't sh you didn't shoot it or maybe saw have the freedom as a freshman yeah. to just fl you know let it fly and um, that's what I kind of want to talk about like because of course we know about the, the regular season it was a choppy regular season up and down um, but y'all got your groove right before the uh, playoffs and um, I felt like I want to just go through some of the games like um, so brother Rice let's start there like okay it's no secret to have three of the best fresh I mean sorry, excuse me three of the best seniors. In the state, and um, what was that pressure like? Y'all, I believe, were one and one on the season. You no, all no, 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 zero and two, zero oh and two, zero oh and, yeah. oh and two. Yeah, damn, y'all was. <laughs> That's right because that game at Brother Rice. <laughs> no, that game at Brother Rice. No, I feel like your nose. Looking at the camera. No, I, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, that's right because yeah, y'all lost a tough one at home too. Mm -hmm. But had the wherewithal to come out and win in the playoffs. So tell me about that game, your process, like, and you know the killer mentality you had to have to beat them. I just felt like that game was like circled. Like it was either like I feel like we was gonna do whatever we had to do to win that game. It's like, us or them. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I just felt like we wanted it more that game. That's just – I feel like that's all that game was about, just one of them more. Yeah. This is your second year playing in the Catholic League. Catholic League, you know, for sure probably is, like, the yeah. best league in Michigan right now. Was it any games or any, uh, like, cer certain school where it was like, man, I know for sure I got to get some extra rest for this game tonight? Like, was it any game circled on your calendar like that? Out of that, that was definitely, like, the quarterfinal game against the LaSalle. I definitely had to get some extra rest. Right. Get some extra shots up for that game because I knew it was like it was going to be a tough game and everybody was going to be there. Okay. And that's what I was going to get to after you a D because. Walk it through. Walk it yeah. through. We need to walk through this, this legendary run. So the U of D game, um, you know, it's a big matchup. You know, it's no secret we're fans of, you know, Sonny Wilson. We felt like. He was, you know, initially the clear-cut favorite for Mr. Basketball. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I felt like, you know, I believe y'all were one and one during the season. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So in, the, in the, so, in the playoffs, that was the big game for me. I was looking for that game. I, was, I wanted to see how you came out, how he came out, because I know it wasn't no back and down. So talk to me about that game and, like, playing up against Sonny and UD. You felt like it was like a good game. Did you get your sleep? You know, I mean, I don't, I don't know the vibes, but like, what's the competition like versus you and Sonny? Well, I just feel like it's definitely always fun playing against Sonny because he competes just like me too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like, he'll do anything to win. He gonna fight. That's yeah. what I love mm -hmm. about him. You know, but same with you. But that game was definitely tough too. Just knowing they had a different game plan for me, and just trying to figure out what I got to do to have an advantage against the team. Yeah, so the coaching, you kind of like, you felt the game plan against you, and it was different than the last time, yeah. so it's like different looks. Okay. So, like, what did it take to beat, to beat U of D in that game? Like, what was it? Is it the same thing? Whoever wants it more? Or was no, it more strategy? Because like, we knew they were going to press us, come out and press us, so I feel like we were getting ready for the press. That worked because we were getting some easy shots in transition, so I feel like just being prepared for that test. I feel like Cobra always has us ready for that type of stuff. Yeah. Like he's a maniac, like, on that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. For sure. We're always ready. All right, man. So, after that, 
What we got? North Farmington? It's North Farmington. North Farmington. That was a tough that game. Was <laughs> that was a tough game. So what was like, like after those two victories, what is like going through your mind as far as how I'm approaching this game? Like, did you know you were going to have like performances like that going into the game or what? Well, I knew I was going to have like good performances, but I didn't know like it was going to be like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wasn't really surprised because I know, like, I, I work on that type of stuff. So, I feel like I knew it was going to happen. Did, this is one question I want to ask before we get to the North Farmers game. Once the tournament started, did your workout regimen s- switch up a little bit or did it stay the same as it was the regular season? Or did you, you feel like oh, I got to amp it up just a little bit just to right make question. sure I'm – Or did it I'm, ease I'm up a, a little bit? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Which, yeah. How was it? I feel like it was just more so, like, I got to work out. I got to take this ice bath. I got to recover right. Instead of just, like, working harder, I feel like I had to recover. Especially gotcha. since, like, those games were, like, you play a game, you take one day off, you mm-hmm. play a game. Yeah. yeah. I feel yeah. like I had to recover the right way. Gotcha. And we haven't heard a lot of players talk about recovery, have we, Jay? No, oh, facts. <laughs> we have See, aha, I got them. I got it. It's the recovery. Okay, all right. It's the recovery. A little ice bath, a little, you know, a little sauna work. Okay. Okay, so next game versus North Farmington. This was at Troy. Um, North Farmington was there. You know, so now you already wild. took out Brother Rice, three of the top seniors. 3D1 seniors. 3D1 seniors. Yeah. Then, you know, uh, U of D, Sonny Wilson. Yeah. 2D1, I don't know where is Xavier going. So Yeah. Uh, Oakland, 2D1, yeah, nice. Okay, and now you're going into North Farmington with was arguably, what, yeah. a top three team all, all year? Mm-hmm. I'd say. I'd say it's all oh, for sure. sure. Yeah. So the pressure is building at this point. Rye Hurst is there, you know, is their leader. Um, me and Jay noticed that you was guarding him and still had energy on the offensive end. Mm-hmm. Rye played that bully ball. So it was moments where he may have got the best of you on that play, but you came right back. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like we noticed where it's like you still had your, all your energy at the end of the game and ready to rock, and you kind of fought back. And you guys were like down six at the half. I feel like y'all was down versus – Versus um, U of D as well at the half. Or like, yeah, we were. yeah, so it's like being down at the half, what's the mindset you came out with that game and like even being down struggling to get that dub versus North Farmington in that tough territory? I definitely knew like Ryan was going to be like a good offensive player because he's like one of the best offensive players in the state. Right. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I really had to prepare for that. And I feel like just coming out there and guarding him and doing a good job on him, I feel like – I would get a lot of respect for that, especially yeah. since he has a lot of skill. Mm-hmm. We noticed it. And I feel like they had Spratt guarding you, right, a lot of times. So, like, Spratt got good length, you know, pause. He uh 6'5". <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's like, but no, like, and he's emerging as a – and, and yeah. he, he was playing you good, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But you were still hitting good shots, and when it came to that fourth quarter, it was what it was. So, like, what took you to that next level was just, you know, just repetition like you always do? Well, I feel like – just fourth quarter, so I feel like I just got to lock in, and that's okay. gonna do me. It's the fourth quarter, way above average. It wasn't my favorite one though. I'm that, waiting. I'm waiting to get to the next one. That's they they say it was my favorite one. one. So like about. after winning that one, North Farmington, like what is like the uh, the setting and stuff at school and with the team and like what's the move like like? Well, against North Farmington, we knew like our whole student. And, like, our whole community had to be there. So, like, they showed out for us that game, especially mm-hmm. our student section just being there, just bringing that presence and that hype to the game. It just – it did a lot for us, especially during the playoffs, just having that student section mm-hmm. there just to get us hype before oh, the game. Student section stuff. be lit. Mm-hmm. Did a lot. Crazy, bro. <laughs> I don't know, man. So, that takes us to our next game, the top two student sections in Michigan. <laughs> De La Salle, Orchard Lake. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now – with this game, okay, with De La Salle, I know y'all were one and one. Um, the first game I feel like was at De La Salle, and y'all got the best of them. But that game at De La Salle, they was playing you tough early mm-hmm. on, knocking you up against the, you know what I'm saying, the boards. And uh, I think that's when you first had the nose injury, or was that? No, nah, through the mask. Remember you threw the mask or whatever? Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then the second game, they got the best of y'all. Phoenix had a real good game. And uh, so the third game, of course, at uh, Callahan Hall, I feel like that was one of the best games because they came out on top of y'all. I feel like y'all was down, I want to say eight, nine zip or something like that. And then you kind of went crazy. 
and caught back up at like yeah, the first like we were down most of the game. Yeah, but you had like the first like twelve points. What was it, Jay? It was it was something crazy. It was right something there. crazy. Listen, man, it was insane. It was yeah. it was it was like that one play against dog on the Michigan watching. State, a football player. That one, I don't know. Listen, I, you don't talk about right. Hoop, it was a lot of hoop. It was a lot of cats that we respect in the hoop game that was in the building watching. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm talking about from older generations, our generation, younger generation, whatever. Mm-hmm. Man, the first couple of shots that you hit, man, like, I mean, when you was raking off them threes, I mean, we all looking at each other like, like bro, can't. Like, we, Cause, we, we in shock right now, bro, because yeah. it was just like. These were tough shots that you was hitting, man. But at the same time, these shots was also y'all team needed this to, yeah. in order to stay in the game. Yeah. And uh, it was like you was leading the storm, man. And I thought that was very impressive with, you know, that the defenders was giving great effort on defense trying to stop you, but it was just better offense. You know what I'm saying? Y'all and, they, almost, and they came out tough, too. Yeah, that, you, y'all yeah. almost, like, towards the end, y'all almost made it look like it was an easy game to win. Yeah. But when I was sitting up there and you made, like, those first three – Three or four threes, I was like, if he don't make these, sure. y'all lose. You know what In I'm his saying? First quarter, yeah, the yeah. first quarter, because right. y'all could have been down so many. But it was like, just even that, like from those three first games we talked about yeah. to then this game, the different approach that you took and knew like the di- the different defensive scheme they had, and to hit those shots. Was crazy, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I know as a kid, I don't know about you, but I know you was aggressive to the hoe. Yeah. Me too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to see one go in. Like, I'm trying to get a late, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Because once I get a late, you know? yeah. yeah. But so it was like uh, that approach where it was just like, like you were being calm and you was looking for those shots. Like, yeah, I'm about to hit this. It was yeah. crazy, you know what I'm saying? So, like going into half after having that performance, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is your mindset? Like, okay, as long as we stay in it, we, you know what I'm saying, we good or what? Yeah, I just, I just had to talk to my teammates and just tell them, like, I know we, like, didn't come this far just to lose again to these dudes. Like, like it was painful losing to them last year. Uh-huh. I feel like, we should have beat them. Like, it was actually painful. Losing. Yeah. And that wasn't an easy game to win either because they were mm-hmm. the champions last year, wasn't they? Right. Yeah. So that's exactly. like you went through Brother Rice, who was predicted to be the champions this year, then U of D, who had the top senior. Yep. Then uh, North Farmington, that had top team. arguably the top team. Then you're going against the defending champs. And, you know, you know how we talk about champions. Right. It's, you can't count them out. So that's four crazy performances. How, how do you stay composed in that situation? Because I know for me as a former player, like, if I hit three in a row, I, I know for a fact I'm about to rush to try to hit this four. <laughs> yeah. so, like, yeah. How did you he stay checked, composed he to checked know me, when to shoot the ball? Yeah. Like, 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 where this coming from, man? Because it's such... It's something that a I don't think I don't think you have to learn. Bro. I don't think he's gonna tell us, Jay. Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> keep, keep that antidote, man. Trusting in my teammates and them trusting in me, and they like them actually believing in me making those shots and putting trust in me to make those shots. I feel like that actually helps me make them better and them make mm-hmm. me better. Mm-hmm. Is it a certain teammate, and you can give you know a couple guys love? They're kind of like, you know, when you miss you miss a couple, man, keep shooting. Like who's who's like your one of your motivators on the squad that kind of helps you. I feel like Sherrod was, like, always that type of guy during okay. the season, like, if I was missing. Telling yeah. me, like, keep shooting that boy. Like, That's a good point guard supposed to do. Yeah, I feel you know like he man? understands, like, how much I work and stuff and yeah. how much I work on that type of stuff. For real. And you got to trust it at that point. Yeah. All right, so before we, you know, of course, we got to talk about um, the loss. Um, you guys had a tough loss to Muskegon. Um, and, you know, what about that game? I know I talked to a couple guys. They said it's, like, it's hard to beat. Get up for all these big games, then you got one more, you almost there, and then you kind of like not run out of gas, but it's like it's a difficult task to do. Is it something that you feel like you may have seen in like watching the footage that could have got you all over the hump or something you didn't do or something that the team didn't do? I felt like like we did like I feel like we did most of what we had to do. I just felt like we came out flat and yeah. we weren't really making shots like that. We weren't getting our calls, but. Okay. Kind of winding down. Um, I got a couple questions before, you know, we get we get up out of here. Um, one is how do you handle the distractions? Instagram, you know, TikTok. 
how do you stay focused and um, stay mature as a you know a teenager with all the distractions? If I'm distracted as a 30 year old man, you know what I'm saying? Like I know it gotta be distracting for you. And what do you do to kind of combat that? You shouldn't be distracted, boy. Well, hey, hey, my I'm wife honest. is watching it. Yeah, she can watch it all she wants to. It's the facts. I'm distracted, and I got three, four jobs. So how do you how do you stay centered and focused? You know what I'm saying? It's like as a youngin, man, because I respect your you know your humbleness. And the way you carry yourself. With a good family. And yeah. I feel like that actually helps me. And I feel like I'm on it. Like, I'm definitely on social media. But like For sure. I don't feel like it's like. You hip to it, but you yeah. ain't letting it get the best like of you. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm on there like all day. But okay. I feel like I got stuff to do. Okay. I think, too, I mean, I know like for me when I was younger, it's like when you in it and you chasing your dream, that is the most exciting thing. Right. More than anything else as far as, like, social media or whatever. Mm-hmm. When every day is changing and you putting in that work and you seeing results, oh, it ain't nothing more ain't exciting nothing than, than that. that. Right you on. know what I'm saying? And you and you still young and you got the the world in front of you. You know what I'm saying? Going on these AAU trips, hearing about this, and it's like, right. yeah, we going to see. You know what I'm saying? And so, playing 17 you, you know what I mean, with all the best ones that's coming out this season. Yeah. You got, you know, two more years to go. And he was sending them boys home, right? Yeah. That, that, that. Hey, so with that said, the where did this come from, though? Where that, did hey, you yeah, make yeah. that? Who was you talking to? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> 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 nah, it was just a slang that me, Sherrod, and Coach Webster made up. Okay. Sent him to college. I feel like that's what we were doing, sent him to college. So, you know, all of us, we all, we all sneakerheads, all right? And I was watching your shoe game this season. You had some, you had some heat on your feet. So, uh, <laughs> what was your top three hoop shoes this season that you, that you like hooping in? Great top question. Three. Great question. Mm, probably... The Kobe's I brung out against Dealers out at Dealers out Kobe fives. Okay. LeBron nines, the pink ones that I wore against North Farmington. And the KD fours I wore against Brother Rice. The red? Yeah. The joints was fired. <laughs> going into next season, um, of course, the guys are going to be available to play from what we're hearing. Uh, you may have some freshmen coming in, who knows? But, um, more importantly, like, what is the focus? And I know the answer, but what's the focus? I want you to say it for the people for next year. Like, what's your focus and what's the game plan? I just feel like we got our chemistry. We got our brothers. We don't need nobody else. I feel like it's just one go at this point. Yeah. We'll give up each other for a state championship. We'll do anything for a state championship. Can I get some quick words of wisdom from my pros to a future pro right here? Go ahead, bud. Man, I would just say – Kind of like piggybacking off what D. Wall says: be where your feet, are. yeah, be where your feet yeah. are, be where your feet are, live in the moment, yeah, um, and just con- continue to keep that work ethic, man. Because I mean, that, I think that's gonna separate you for a long time. You got a bright future in front of you, man. Great family behind you, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. Have fun. That's all I say. Enjoy have this. Have fun. Remember the game. But basketball is supposed to be fun. So yeah, yeah have fun. One thing I can say from like kicking it with you like long as a, long, longer today, it seems like you big on family. I would keep that, bro. Family is everything, and mm. this is one. It's gonna keep you humble, keep you centered. Joe got a great family, you know what I'm saying? That keeps him centered. Jay got a great family. I got a great family. Vince got a great family, and we put family first, bro. So we thank you for coming on. You know what I mean? We looking forward to this off season next year. All that, bro. We wish you the best here at No Blood, No Foul, man. You got any final words for the people? Just thank you for everybody, all the all like, all the people that supported us during the playoffs, especially St. Mary's people. Just thank, just thank you. Thank you, St. Mary's. We appreciate y'all. Culver, Coach Webster, man, y'all got to come out here next. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we out, want the shout squad. Out, shout, out, shout out Jermaine Gonzalez too, bro. You said Jermaine Gonzalez? Yeah. Shout, shout out, out Jermaine Gonzalez. Gonzalez. I ain't hip, man. But what up, man? Hey, we dude. rock with you. <laughs> hey, man, my name Uncle Smooth. I got Trey McKinney right here. Fago Joe, J-Blood. We signing out, man. There's no blood, no fire. Signing out. Peace.